Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, another day on the house build. So in this video we're building the dining table to go with our dining bench. And we're doing it with a little bit of a twist, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be chucking a bit of an epoxy S-bend in it. And it's going to be really cool. So the video is going to be laid out a little bit differently because somehow I lost a lot, fair bit of my footage from this. Not too sure, not too technical to be able to get it back. I did manage to retrieve a fair bit of it. I think somehow I deleted it. But it is what it is. was going to scrap the whole video, but I decided not. Nah, I'll use the footage that I managed to retrieve and we'll use that and make the best of the video we can. So in saying that, let's get into the video and we'll show you how we went. So there you go, we've managed to wingle this thing up here. So this is just a skeletal frame like I said before. So the first challenge is try and get this thing as stable as with the legs on. So as you can see what we went ahead and we've done is first of all we've done our box frame. So that's pretty much the size of what the table is going to be. It's going to be a little bit bigger by the time we put the side, side frame on and stuff. That's average it. And then what we did was we got, got doubled up on two beams here and two beams over there. What I've done there is I've got some long screws going in the sides to anchor it in nice and snug, strong. Plus we glued everything as well, so that just makes it extra strong. And then what we've done is we've countersunk this hole here, because that's our leg size there. And we're going to have two legs, and then we've gone ahead and we've trimmed these pieces of wood out here that go around the outside. So once the leg goes in, we can screw it from the top side coming inwards. Then we can come to the side, screw it sideways as well, and just try and make this as rigid as we possibly can. Plus we'll glue that as well, fingers crossed, everything will be nice and solid. And then it's just a matter of when we do the footings to anchor to the floor, we're going to try and do something that's stable there, so fingers crossed it doesn't rock or move or anything like that. And hopefully we can manage to pull this thing off. Once we've got the skeletal frame, then we go into the next stage of boxing everything in. Ha 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 ha. 
Inspector Ola, hey? Inspecting Daddy's job. Alright guys, so it's the next day, and yesterday we ended up getting rained out, so every time I set up the saw out the back, started cutting wood, just kept raining down on us, so we ended up calling it a day. We did end up getting our footings, two base footings on first. As you can see, I'm not quite getting these women corners 100% right, so I'm going to have to make sure I get that right for down this part when I do the, the outside of that, because we want them pretty snug, but for this part it's not too bad, I've got a bit of body fit a bit of bog, we'll just bog that up, clean it all up and then we're going to round the corners, make it nice and tidy and then what we're going to do is make another section to widen the footing and that part of the footing is going to be the anchor point that's going to anchor to the ground, fingers crossed, make it all nice and sturdy. So saying that, let's go ahead and get to it and see if we can get these footings finished today and ready to go. Alright guys, so there you go, we've got all the wood cut for the sides, ready to rock and roll. So the next thing we're going to do now is we've got this packer here that we're going to just lay up alongside and then make sure these sit up flush with it. 
screw it into the sides from the inside out so they don't get any screw holes from the outside. Fingers crossed all our angles work perfectly and we should be able to just give them a nice grind, give them a nice sand off and by the top end of it we should be able to just stain the outside and then the top will be the nice wood. So let's go see how we go. Alright guys, so what I'm going to try and do here is explain to you the steps that we missed with the video footage because there was quite a fair bit that we did miss, which I'm spewing, but it is what it is. So what first thing we did was we put our big sideboards on, put them all around the table, which then gave us the size to work for inside. Then we went and grabbed our old cupboard doors that we made up for the hallway cabinet, but never actually used, which was perfect. We glued a whole heap of slats together. I love the look of it, but we couldn't use it in that area because because of the way we did it, it was just too much warpage for doors. So we ended up having to turf them and do something else for that. So we've got them. What we've done is we've put it down as a cover. Then I've got Dara to mark out an S where she wanted it. We went and cut that in two, then split it, cut it down to size so it sat inside that wood framework, dropped it in, and that gave us our S that's on the table now. Then the next thing we done was we gone and got some thin plywood and we dropped that inside the S to give the epoxy something to actually sit on top of. Once that was all in place, then we ran a bead of silicon around all the joints to make sure it was all sealed so there'd be no leaks when we start pouring epoxy. And then from that part, we actually did cut a nice groove in for the LED light strip because I thought that'd be a really cool thing to have on the channel. So we, chucked, we cut that in and that looked like this. which looks super cool. I was super chuffed with how that was turned out, but unfortunately, it didn't quite go to plan as you'll see further in the video. And the last thing we did from here was when everything was all sealed, all the silicon had dried and everything else, we were all ready to pour. I got some masking tape and just made like a damn wall around the S so that the epoxy could come a little bit higher than where we wanted it to actually seat, be cut down to for the table height. So that way when we go and router the, the table flat, any defects and stuff would be removed. So it worked out reasonably well, but we did have a few blowouts which uh, ended up going everywhere. Luckily enough, we did have tarp and everything down because that was the other thing. I built the table, but I didn't work out how I could actually get the table out of the door so I could do it out in a nice area that it didn't really matter about spilling it. So we couldn't get it through the door, so I kind of had to make do with it being in place so we bolted that all to the floor where it's going to be in position and we made made do of it where we were just had to super tarp it all out and i'm glad we did because of the spillage that we did get from that damn wall kind of came over tipped over a little bit we did have buckets catching the dribbles and stuff like that majority of it but there was some that did make it to the floor would have been on the tiles if we didn't catch it so all well and good so the next thing we did in the epoxy, we had to mix the epoxy and we had to mix the hardener. And there was a certain ratio we had to be perfectly spot on with. Because one of the things the guy that we bought the stuff from said was if you get it wrong, it ain't going to dry and you're going to be up for a hell of a time. So we didn't want that. I was paranoid. So I made sure I literally mixed them to the mill. Had two mixing cups, one for the hardener, one for the epoxy. We mixed each one, chucked them in the bucket. So it was all good to go. Then we had a pearl white pigment that got mixed into the buckets then stirred it all in beautifully until it was really happy and there was hardly any bubbles. Poured the epoxy into the S. Once it went in there, there was still little bubbles and stuff. Just went over that with a hot butane gun and got rid of the bubbles and stuff like that. So it all turned out perfect. And then we just had to wait for it to start setting a bit. And as it started getting like a thick, consistent honey, just sitting there with the mixing stick and just mixing a bit of a pattern into the, into the epoxy until I was happy with the setting. And then once that was done, we just left it for the night, come out in the morning, and she was pretty much hard. There was still a little bit tacky in the morning, but the next day she was solid and all good to go. So super cool. But in saying that, that should pretty much catch us up to the video for where we are now. One last thing before we get back to the video, just want to say a big thanks to Sean from Futura Design for helping us out with supplying us with the epoxy 
and helping me out with all the details to make sure that the pour went as smooth as possible. I will put his details down in the comments box below. So anyone that's interested in using Futura to design for the epoxy can get in touch with him and he'll help you out wherever he can. And saying that, let's get back to the video. Right, so we've gone and made a just a quick slip up for the router to go in so we can slide the router up and down here and we push this back and forward and what that's going to do is just allow us some straight cuts the main idea of this is just to get a nice level ground again and then once that's all done we're just going to be able to get the sander on it and take care of that but before we start with that what we're going to do is just go around where we've got epoxy leaks and bog fixes and stuff on the sides and up the top here, we just got to go and sand that all nice and flush so that the sled slides nicely. And then we can make a start. Alright guys, we got it all sanded down. Now there's a little bit of stuff right here and right here that I noticed and it was like a grey and it was a silicon. So obviously I've got a little bit of slastic that had gone over and I wanted to get rid of it. So I've just picked it all out and I've gone to wood bog it with the pine bog. And then I've realised that the uh, lights are just there. So I've just gone and plug them in to see if I've done any damage and I have damaged it. So we've got no lights past this point, so obviously I've damaged something on the LEDs in this area here, which kind of sucks. But I've done it now, so I'm going to have to just deal with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pine bog this back up now, finish sanding this off, and then we'll go sand it all down and everything else. And what I might do, if I want to try and get these lights revamped, I think the best idea might be going in from underneath. And I might try and just take away the bottom of the board where this was covering. And hopefully I can kind of find it and maybe be able to solder them back together and even if we're missing a light or two just in the middle here I might be able to get the rest of it all lit up because it was kind of the part that I was most excited about but oh well overall the table's still coming up not too badly we're just going to get the router out and we're going to round the edges get everything looking sweet and then we're going to go another process of finer paper over the sanding then we're going to be going, so we're going to, we've just done a 40 grit, just get rid of all the ripples and stuff off it, which is absolutely fantastic. Then we've got the 120 grit, and then we've got 340 grit, and then we've got 1000 grit and 2000 grit for the epoxy setup. So hopefully we'll get that back to see through, and we should be sweet. But as for the lights, I guess we'll be uh, working on them soon. Guys, so apart from the lighting situation, I'm pretty happy with where we're at at the moment. So as you've seen, we did a 40 grit, 80 grit, 120 grit, and we went to 600 grit, 1000 grit, 
and 2000 grit on the actual epoxy. So she's looking pretty good now. Got the nice glitters coming back through it. So the next thing we got, we went and bought a polyurethane satin coating for it. So we're gonna put three coats of this stuff on top of this. So we've gone and bought a little roller and a little setup. We're gonna start rolling this stuff out. So there you go, the table's all complete and ready to rock and roll. We've got the footings all painted up, looking superb, matching in with the actual bench itself. So, super chuffed with how this has all turned out. A few learning curves as we've gone along the way. I was saying, no wood man, but I think I'm getting better. Definitely happy with how it's all rocked out. And the epoxy itself, I was absolutely freaking out about how it was going to go because when I picked it up, they said, the one thing people do do wrong is not mix it right and it won't set. But we had no trouble with that, she set beautifully. So she's all ready to rock and roll. And unfortunately, it was a little bit of a mistake of mine. I went and found a little bit of a disc, disc shape around the areas here and went carving in without even thinking about it and I cut my LED lights. So the lights didn't work out, unfortunately. But overall, we are chuffed with how it's turned out. Lights were more so just for a bit of a channel thing. But we won't be, this won't be the last of the epoxy pours that we'll be doing. We actually did enjoy this. And we're really certain that when we get the lounge room up and going, we're definitely keen on having a crack at a coffee table and we'll probably light that sucker up and uh, hopefully get some nice effects going through that one. But with all that's being said and done, we are going to call that a wrap for this video. If you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to hit the like button down below. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you're enjoying the content, please hit that subscribe button. See notifications for upcoming videos because there are going to be plenty more things where we're going to take it on the challenge and see if we can do it. And as you see, we have a crack at it. Doesn't always turn out 100% right, but we get a result and it's super cool. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram on Stay True TV. Get the inside scoop before YouTube. We thank you for your love and support to the channel. Stay safe, stay real, and we'll catch you next time.